Hello, Dr. Bidijo here. Uh, today we're going to learn a little bit about georeferencing using Agisoft Metashape um, and data from a drone or UAV. So we're going to go ahead and first look at our folder structure and make sure we're all kind of set to go. Um, in our field day in my class, we did two different missions. Here's one mission uh, where we recorded Recreation Field East. I'm going to open that up. And you should set yours up in the same way where you have a Photos folder, an Output folder, and an Export folder. And then also, since you'll be georeferencing, hopefully you already took your GCP points uh, in the field using some sort of GPS, high-precision GPS equipment, or um, a total station, or whatever it might have been. And you also will have formatted it in the same way as I have it here. You have the name of your GCP. You call it GCP 2, 3, 9, whatever the numbers are. Um, your longitude, your latitude, and elevation. You might have Latin long switched, that's fine, as long as we make sure we're switched in the program as well. But you do want to set up set it up like this. You can do it in a text file and make sure it's tab, delim tab delimited or delimited in, in some sort of way. I always just use tab delimited, but Agisoft will allow you to do many things. So make sure you prepare it though like this. We you have your, your columns named and then each of the GCPs nice and neat. So we'll close that out. We'll get back to that later. Um, go ahead and open up Agisoft Metashape and load your photos in and run in alignment. So what I'm bringing up here is um, a project that I've already completed, you know, from, from beginning to end, but I went ahead and copied one of the chunks and brought it all the way back to just the alignment phase, as you can see it here, um, so that we can actually work through the georeferencing together. So once you've run it on an alignment, let's just show you here, workflow, alignment, align photos, you want to run it on high. Um, you can have your reference preselection set up if you want to, as well as your, your generic preselection checked off or uncheck them, depending on what you want to do. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I usually have my key point limit at 40,000, and then tie point limit can be somewhere in the 4,000 to 10,000 range. I typically will set it up just like this and hit OK. We'll get our aligned photos, and you should see that it, it aligns pretty straight if you're using some sort of automated mission, um, whether it's Mission Maker or you know Pix4D Capture. You should have some sort of automated flight path pre-planned. And here we actually use the flight path where it goes back and forth in one direction and then it turns this grid 90 degrees and then starts to go back and forth in another direction. So this is good for actually creating uh, maps, you know, orthophotos, and also digital surface models in a systematic way. So we, we're, we're assuming here in this tutorial that you've already run the alignment, you've had, everything checks out okay. Um, I want you to go over here to start us out and it is likely you'll have these already checked off. Now these are your photos. This is all of your photos and this is the metadata in your photos showing lat long and altitude per photo. So if you are using a drone where the camera actually is being is stamping each and every one of your images and geotagging them with uh, with your lat long and altitude, it's probably going to do something like this where everything's checked off, right? We want to uncheck that because we're going to actually use a different set of coordinates to georeference this model because these don't quite have as much accuracy, accuracy as we want. So I'm going to highlight them all, which you can easily do by clicking Control A and then one of those check boxes and they're all unchecked. Okay, so that's done. Now we're actually going to run a mesh um, at 200,000 polys just to get a solid surface here that we can plant these um, these points down as we mark them and you'll you'll see what I mean in just a moment what I what what we're doing there so I'm going to turn off our cameras just so we can see the the baseball field and I'm going to go to workflow I'm going to go to mesh skipping dense cloud I'm going to go to mesh and using the sparse cloud I'm going to make a custom mesh at 200,000 face count and hit OK. It's going to go fairly quickly because it's just it's just going to make a surface out of what we have here in our sparse cloud. Now it's done. We're going to look at it, and as you can see, it's it's not going to look great. It's not supposed to look great because we're not done. We're actually going to redo this mesh later on, but we need to use this kind of surface to lay those points down on. Now I have a pretty flat field here, but if you have any sort of topography, you'll see some of the topography rippling through. 
um, in the sparse cloud mesh. So, so that, like I said, this is a temporary mesh. We're just doing it so we have a solid place to put those points down on when we're when we're assigning coordinate. So let's go ahead and begin the process of importing our GCPs. And click import. And that's this button right up here, and we have to go back out to where that text file is. Click it, and we'll hit open and it loads it all up right here. Now, if you're having trouble seeing what's going on in terms of these GCPs listed here, you can always resize this window to make it bigger or smaller. So, looks like we have our coordinate system plugged in, which we used uh, when collecting the points, WGS84. Um, tab delimiter, if you use something else, this is your chance to either use semicolon, comma, space, whatever it might have been. I use tab, and that's why it shows up this way exactly how I want it. Um, then we're going to go ahead and make sure it starts import row at 2, making sure it ignores this first one and goes right into GCP2. All right. And at this point, you can go ahead and hit OK. And it's going to pop up a little dialog saying, can't find match for GCP2 entry. Create new marker. Well, we didn't create any markers here, so obviously we want to say yes to all of these. So we'll hit yes to all, and it imports them and makes these little blue flags with the GCP number there and their correct coordinates where they're supposed to go. Now, here comes the part where we actually have to find these GCPs in the photos themselves and lay down a point right where they're supposed to go. So let's let's take a look here. Um, let's actually just look through our imagery. Double click. You see one here where they've already tried to plant a flag down on GCP7. I'm going to zoom in. And then you can see, is that correct? Yes, no, where is it? Looks like it is kind of in the center there. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of move it to where I think that center is for number seven. And when you do click on it, it turns green. That means it's something that you yourself have actually confirmed. So, and you'll see that things actually will, on the fly, update themselves. As you saw here, there's some gray flags and these little icons, some blue flags now. So if I go to this one here, Double click that photo. It looks like it, it the computer went in and put in a flag right on GCP7. I want to shift it just a slight bit. Right? Some more. There's GCP7 again. Okay, so it looks like it's actually put in a few on GCP7. Now what I can do once you've put in about you know three or four is you can right click on the GCP here, filter photo by marker. And over here in your Photos pane, the only photos that it should have are photos that actually have GCP7 in them. So I'm looking at 7 right now. If I double click here, it opens up another photo that has 7. They all have 7 in them. And the best part of it is it puts the 7 right in the center of your screen so you don't have to go searching for it. And it looks like the computer is actually doing a pretty good job making sure that that dot's kind of in the center of our GCP. And now here's some that have gray. If I want to, I can go in and make sure that's, you know, where I, where I want it, right in the center. And look, it already updated a few more of these, turning them blue, right? So if I go over here and I head over to the right with this little um, scrolly thing, you can see where it says projections. It did 35 of them just from the few that I, I planted myself. I think I maybe put three or four down, and it's already got 35 in the bag for me. So I, I would just go ahead and, and start doing this with every single GCP until you get at least 30 per 30 projections down. If you didn't get that many photos that where you couldn't actually put 30 projections on, on each of these GCPs, maybe 10 would be a good threshold to go with. So go ahead and... Um, I would say go ahead and start doing this for other GCPs that you might see. Well, let's take a look here. Now, if you look at the model in the model view, I'm shutting, it, shutting out one of these, uh, the photo itself, click the flag and you'll actually see where the GCPs roughly are based on the coordinates that you put in there. Um, you have to actually hit this flag to toggle that on and off. Now, if I go to GCP4 and I want the photos from 4, but I haven't laid down any points, a strategy you can use is making the camera show, grabbing here the selection tool, selecting the cameras that are overhead, and then scrolling through, make it list format, 
scrolling through these, we have to reset our filter because remember we had it filtered for GCP7. And see if we can find it. Look, there's some highlighted photos. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And there we go. Here's a number four. I'll plant one down there. I know the next one in sequence was also. Yep. And that one actually went automatically. I didn't even touch that one. Save with that. So it looks like four has a few projections, uh, 19 of them. So I should be able to right click and do filter by photo, filter by marker. And I've got a bunch of ones that should have a four in there. Yeah. Yep. Very good. All right. So um, what I forgot to do last time was hit this little button here, which is to undo the filter so that I'm back to all the photos. So let's do another one. Um, take number two, for instance. We want to do GCP2. I'm going to close out the image. GCP2 is down over here. So I want all the photos out of there. So I'm going to highlight them, selection tool, and then I'll scroll through until I see them come up here. Oh, there's a bunch right there. Aha, there's GCP2. OK, put that down. And yep, oh, looks like it's actually doing it just fine. Looks like I have 14 projections just out of putting a couple there. And getting GCP3, I'm going to close that out. There's GCP3 towards the center. Selection tool. Just going to lasso these guys in here and scroll through. Ah, these four look like they have a three in there. There's three. And so the goal here is just to make sure that everything's in the center and that you actually are um, projecting at least you know 10 to 30 of these flags and, and double check to make sure they actually go into the center. So, all right, so go ahead and let you finish up that and, and make sure that you actually do get through each of your GCPs that you're capable of doing. Um, something I do want to mention is that we took control points in the field and we know the distance between six and nine. Uh, if you want to, you can go ahead and use the six and nine that you, that you um, collected in the field in terms of GPS points and georeference using them, but you can also leave them unreferenced if you want and use them as checkpoints. Uh, but I often check using the little ruler here as well after everything is said and done. The final steps georeferencing is to actually hit the update button, making sure every once in a while you hit update and it updates everything um, in terms of, you know, spatially where things are. You get an update also on your error readout, you know, how much error you're actually introducing into this model uh, based on the projections you've got there. And then once you're completely done, you want to run an optimized camera with the GCPs all marked into place. And then you move on with the workflow where you build dense cloud, and then you build a mesh, and then you build a texture. So the part of your referencing goes in after the initial alignment, after creating a, a very uh, temporary mesh out of 200 faces, and then 200,000 faces, then you go in and you georeference in the photos, making sure that you know all of these flags are planted in the center. Once that's done and you've been updating as you go, at the end you hit optimize cameras right here and it reorients all of your, your photos so that they're optimized for um, using the actual GCPs, the actual GPS coordinates. So that's pretty much it. Um, the rest of it, you just take through the normal workflow in, in Metashape, you know, making your, your dense cloud, your mesh, um, and then your texture. And then the last component would be building a DEM and building an ortho mosaic. So you can see the normal workflow is right in here. Then you build a DEM and you build an ortho mosaic. And if you want to export those, it's as simple as export, export ortho mosaic, export DEM, and you'll export as the TIFF file right in here. So good luck.